Hey, what's up guys? This is Mark from Spantacular.com. We're going to do a quick hands-on here with the Samsung Droid Charge. Uh, a few people have asked some questions about it, so we're just going to try and cover the basics here. Uh, first thing you notice about the charge is it's rocking a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. Uh, that's a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels. So it's pretty bright. Uh, let's flip it around a little bit. Let's see if you guys can get a look. And uh, it's nice. It's not as bright as the uh, iPhone 4's Retina, but it's a very, very nice crisp display. Gives off a good image. Uh, we cruise down to the bottom of the handset. We've got actual physical buttons, which is a different, uh, different direction from what Android's been doing lately with the touch capacitive buttons. Seems like everybody's trying to do away with them. I personally like this because it gives you something to actually press in. You get that little click feel. So it's pretty much a nice touch in my opinion, but to each his own. Uh, you cruise up to the top, you've got a 1.3 front facing uh, camera, 1.3 megapixel for self portraits, uh, video chats, things like that. Flip over to the side, got HDMI input, so if you want to hook this up to a big display or uh, like a TV or a monitor or anything like that that has HDMI inputs, you can do it like that. Uh, we've got power control here, and at the top, Got 3.5 audio jack, that's pretty much standard now, nothing weird about that. Go on the other side, audio control, volume up and down, and micro USB input. Flip it over on its face, and we've got a megapixel cam with uh, autofocus and LED flash. As you can see, this is cruising Verizon's LTE 4G network, and um, overall, it's, it's a pretty good handset. It has a nice light feel to it doesn't feel too heavy. Uh, this phone is due to come out any day now. It was actually pushed back due to the LTE uh, network having an outage and the uh, release date's kind of up in the air right now, but we're hearing something about perhaps um, uh, maybe the second week of May. That's what we're hearing right about now. Uh, as far as speed goes and what's under the hood, you've got a one gigahertz processor. I believe it's the same uh, chip as what you'll find and any of the other Samsung Galaxy S devices, including the Nexus S. Uh, the phone's pretty fast and responsive overall. Just trying to show you as far as text input. It also has a stock keyboard for text input or swipe. I personally use swipe because I'm just used to it by now. So try and do something at this weird, weird angle. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, that actually worked. And I'm going to go there. So overall, the phone's pretty quick. Uh, it's got a half a gig of RAM on board. Ships with a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. So that's got you covered as far as, as far as memory. Also, Samsung tossed in a $25 uh, Media Hub coupon. So if you're looking to rent, purchase uh, media like TV shows, movies, and things like that, that's also something that you'll be able to do out the box with this thing. Uh, didn't come with any headphones or anything like that. That was surprising. Samsung normally goes all out with the headphones. Uh, for their for their smartphones, at least their top tier phones like something like this, but no headphones, so it's kind of a shocker there. Uh, speaking of, let's see, we're gonna play a trailer to give you an idea what the. I'm gonna try and bring a trailer up here, give you an idea what the audio is like on this thing, what that loudspeaker can do. So give me just a sec, we're waiting for this to load up. It's running off of Verizon's 3G right now because the 4T has been kind of spotty out here. Uh, the, did I say 4T? I meant LTE. <laughs> So, let's see, okay, and let's see how this bad boy handles flash. Where's the harm in China? Went inside. Awesome, everything. This is a trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean and Stranger Things. <laughs> As you can see, pretty loud audio. I'm going to crank that down and notch actually. But, um, but that was just a quick sample of that. Uh, as far as the software, it's running Android 2.2 with the latest version of uh, Samsung's TouchWiz. And that's when I say TouchWiz, it's stuff like this. You get like little enhancements to where you can kind of adjust things and move things around. Everybody's doing their own thing with Android these days. Uh, TouchWiz has come a long way. A lot of people weren't too keen on it earlier out, but I personally have taken a shine into it. So like for example, if you want to contact somebody, 
Let's see. I'll bring up Mrs. here. And if I want to send her a message, one slide, there you go. Or if I want to call her, wait a minute, I say wrong one. If I want to call her, <laughs> we got like four, we got like four different ones from my wife, so it's kind of weird. Basically, you slide your finger in that direction and it calls people. My contact's kind of imported and kind of weird, but that's the whole concept of what they're trying to do with TouchWiz. Uh, it's got a variety of social widgets and things like that, uh, like your Facebook and your Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Overall, it's a nice fail. Um, battery performance on this handset has been really, 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 really outstanding. Uh, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but I'd have to say this phone is pretty much what everybody was hoping the HTC Thunderbolt would be. It's a strong 4G handset. Uh, it's fast and reliable so far, and the battery's really holding up. This is, I've been going on this all day, and you know, what you see is what you get. So, uh, I'm gonna get ready to close this thing out. If you have any questions about this handset, you wanna know how something works, question about something I might not have touched on, feel free to leave us a message, and we will gladly address that. So, this is Mark from Spantechler.com. Thanks for stopping by.